Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Electronics channel. In this video, I'm going to talk about power factor, which is the missing piece needed to become the ruler of Westeros. Although when talking about AC electrical circuits, it's the ratio of real power delivered to a load over the apparent power in a circuit. So the definition of power factor, and I'm going to abbreviate it as PF, is equal to the ratio of the real power delivered to a load divided by the apparent power in a circuit, so P over S. When the load is linear, in other words, when I have only resistive, inductive, and capacitive elements in the circuit, then the power factor is going to be due solely to the reactive and resistive elements in the circuit, so solely due to R, L, and C. However, when a load is nonlinear, and that's when you have nonlinear elements like diodes and switches in the circuit, so for example, in a rectifier or in a switch mode power supply, there's going to be a nonlinear factor, a distortion factor that needs to be included in the power factor. This video is going to deal only with linear loads, so in other words, only when you have R, L, and C or some combination of those three devices in the circuits. So when you have linear loads with resistors in them, those resistors are going to consume real power. They're going to actually take the energy from the system and, and convert it into heat. So it can't be brought back into the circuit. And when you have capacitors and inductors in the circuit, those things consume reactive power. I say consume, but the power doesn't actually get consumed. The reason this is called reactive power is because it's power that cycles back and forth between the source and the load, so it never actually gets used up, it just gets converted back and forth within the circuit. Real power is designated with a P, and reactive power is designated with a Q. These two types of powers can be combined together, designating P on the x-axis and Q on the y-axis, and this can be either in the positive or the negative direction. And then the sum, the vector sum of those two, is going to give S, where S is the apparent power. This triangle made up of the real power, reactive power, and apparent power is called the power triangle. And the definition of power factor is the ratio of P over S. But given the power triangle, we can see that it's a, the power triangle is a right triangle and the angle between P and S we can designate as theta. And knowing our trigonometry, we can see that that ratio of P over S is also equal to the cosine of theta. Power factor can be lagging as shown by this power triangle. And lagging means that current is lagging the voltage. And this occurs when the reactive part of the circuit is more inductive. Power factor can also be leading. And a leading power factor means that current leads the voltage. And leading power factor occurs when the reactive components are capacitive. Power factor is important because it can indicate how much current must flow in a circuit to provide a given amount of power to a load. Let's take a look at a couple of examples to see how changing power factor can actually change the amount of current that needs to be given to a load, even if the actual real power consumed by the load doesn't change. In this first case, we have a circuit of some kind that consumes only real power and it consumes one kilowatt of real power. It has a 120 volt RMS source. So let's figure out what the current is going to be. Because only real power is consumed, we can figure out the RMS current by taking that power, 1000. More specifically, we can identify that if we have one kilowatt of power, then we'll also have 1000 VA of apparent power power factor of one means the apparent power and the real power are going to be equal to each other. So the RMS current will be 1000 VA divided by 120 volts. The current that is delivered to that circuit is going to have an RMS value of 8.3 amps. Now what if the power factor was a little bit lower? The real power delivered to the circuit is still one kilowatt, but my power factor is now 0.9. Voltage supplied, let's say it's the same 120 volts RMS, and I can first calculate what my apparent power is. My apparent power is equal to P over the power factor, the real power over the power factor, so we've got 1,000 watts divided by 0.9, and that works out to 1,111 VA. 
Again, since S is equal to the VRMS times the IRMS, then the current that's delivered to this circuit has to be 1,111 VA divided by 120 volts. And that works out to 9.26 amps. Same amount of real power, but now I have some kind of reactive element in the circuit that needs to be powered up and then returns power. And therefore, that reactive element increases the actual RMS current that has to be delivered to the circuit. So that example is with a power factor that's not very low, but let's say the power factor of this new circuit is a fairly low 0.6. Same amount of real power, but a power factor of 0.6 means that my apparent power will be 1000 over 0.6, which works out to 1667 VA. Now let's say that all three of these are the same circuit I just changed what was inside the box here so the power factor changes. And let's say also that the source is only capable of delivering 10 amps of current. With a power factor of 1 and a power factor of 0.9, the RMS current is less than 10. We've got 8.3 and 9.26 amps. In this case, if my power factor drops to 0.6, my apparent power jumps up to 1667 VA, my current that's being delivered by the source is 1667 VA over 120 volts and that works out to 13.9 amps. That's well above the maximum 10 amps that this generator is able to supply or maybe the wires in the circuit are able to support. So what's going to happen is this circuit is going to go boom. Well maybe not. It'll overheat and it'll probably create a dangerous situation but it's exceeding its spec so we don't want to operate it that way anyway. Let's look at a simple example. In this example, I have a 480 volt RMS source that's providing power to this circuit that consumes 100 kilowatts of real power and 120 kVar of reactive power. And in this case, it's inductive. So what I will have, if I'm drawing this in my power triangle, I will have 100 kilowatts real power, 120 kVar, reactive power in the positive direction because this is inductive and I'm going to have some value for S. S is equal to the square root of 100 kilowatts squared plus 120 kVar squared and that works out to 156.2 kVA. So now that I have the real power and the apparent power very easy to figure out the power factor. That will be 100 kilowatts over 156.2 kVA. And that works out to 0.64. The current provided by the generator, well, that comes from the fact that the apparent power is equal to VRMS, IRMS. I know my apparent power. I know the voltage supplied by the source, 480 volts. I can therefore very easily calculate the RMS current provided by that source and that is equal to 156.2 kVA divided by 480 volts and that is equal to 325.4 amps. So that generator has to provide a fairly large amount of current to power this load. Remember in those last examples where I said it's nice to have a very high power factor so you're not having to provide a lot of current to your circuit even though it's not actually using that much current? Well, I'm going to give you a hint on power of power factor correction, which is a video to come. In this example, I have 120 kVar of inductive power. If I could somehow add 120 kVar of capacitive power, the inductive power, the inductive reactive power and the capacitive reactive power would cancel each other out and I would theoretically have zero reactive power, which would bring my power factor to one. One final example to show you the relationship between the, the angle in the power triangle compared to the phase angle between voltage and current in the circuit. So I've got this 120 volt source that's providing voltage to this three ohm resistor and minus J4 ohm capacitor. The total impedance of this circuit is of course equal to three minus J four ohms or five ohms 
with a phase angle of negative 53 degrees. The total current in the circuit is equal to V over Z, so that will be 24 amps with a phase angle of 53 degrees. This is a leading circuit because it is capacitive, meaning current is leading voltage. Okay, now let's look at things from a power point of view. The power consumed by the circuit will simply be the power consumed by that resistor, so that's going to be equal to I squared times R. And I'm just using the magnitudes in this case, so I just need to use the magnitude of current here. So that will be 24 amps squared times a 3 ohm resistor, which equals 1,728 watts. The reactive power in this circuit will be solely due to the capacitor. So I have that 24 amps going through the capacitor. It's a 4 ohm capacitor, and that means it's using 2,304 VAR of capacitive power. Now if I draw out the power triangle for this, I've got 728 watts of real power. I have 2,304 VAR of reactive power. It's in the negative direction because this is a capacitive reactive power. And that gives me some amount of apparent power S. Remember S is going to be equal to the square root of 1728 squared plus 2,304 squared. That gives me 2,880 VAR of apparent power. The phase angle here between the real power and the apparent power is equal to the inverse tan of negative 2304 over 1728 and that works out to negative 53 degrees. Hey look at that. That phase angle between the real power and the apparent power is equal to the phase difference between the voltage and the current zero minus the 53 degrees of the current, that equals minus 53 degrees. So the phase difference between voltage and current in the circuit is going to be equal to the angle between the real power and the apparent power. So that wraps it up for this video. That should give you some insight into these, this concept of power factor as it applies to AC circuits. Not so much the concept of power factor applied to Game of Thrones. Thanks so much for watching. I will see you in the next video. Power is a curious thing, my lord. Are you fond of riddles? Why, am I about to hear one? Three great men sit in a room. A king, a priest, and a rich man. Between them stands a common sellsword. Each great man bids the sellsword kill the other two. Who lives, who dies. Power resides where men believe. It resides. A very small man can cast a very large shadow.